So hi guys, so today we are here to talk to you about the 10 MCQs in surgery again. Like it's another session in which we'll be discussing 10 MCQs in surgery. So let's kind of begin with it and yeah, I hope you'll like it. So yeah, let's start with it. The first MCQ which I have for you guys today is, which of the following is an around knee perforator? Okay, so which of these is an around knee perforator? If you're asked like the Marin Kushner, Cockets, Boyds and the Dots, which of these is an around knee perforator? So what you need to understand is that the, okay, so here, what do you have? Which of these is a kind of a around knee perforator? It is Boyds. Okay, if you think that the answer is Boyds, you're absolutely correct. So there, okay, so first of all, if I just ask you, how many perforators are present in our body? So, yeah. How many perforators are present? The answer would be many, like more than 100, more than 100. But we have few of them which are called as a named perforators. Okay, so we have few of them which are called as a named perforators. So what are the named perforators in our body guys? So we have uh, a few of the named perforators. Now, let's say if at all this is the limb. So, where is this kind of Boyd's perforator present? So, this is the knee. A perforator which is basically present just below the knee. This is what is called as Boyd's. Now, some people argue that a dot's perforator which is present over here, this is also a around knee perforator. Well, no. Dot's is a bit more above knee as compared to that of a Boyd's. So, if at all the question says around knee perforator, you have to go it with boys. If at all they ask you which perforator is present just below the below the knee, definitely the answer is boys. And if at all they ask you which perforator is present above the knee, then your answer would be dots. I hope you get this. So yeah, this is about the name perforators and this is what the perforator which is around knee is present. Okay. I hope you got this particular simple concept. Now uh, the image which I have tried to show in here, this basically resembles the appearance on the radiology of one particular finding. So first of all, what is this particular image guys? So this is an image of a ginkgo leaf. Ginkgo leaf. So what I'm trying to ask you is that ginkgo leaf appearance or a ginkgo leaf sign. This is basically seen where? So is it seen in hemothorax? Is it seen in subcutaneous emphysema? Ecclesia cardia or an aortic rupture? Okay, so answer is very simple. The answer is B, that is a subcutaneous emphysema. So what happens in the subcutaneous emphysema? You have your pectoralis major muscle like this. Okay, so you have a pectoralis major muscle like this. Now in the subcutaneous emphysema, what is the basic thing happening? Okay, so first of all, let us understand this. So in the subcutaneous emphysema, what do we have? We have basically air in subcutaneous tissue we have air in subcutaneous tissue now in this particular thing what happens the air gets aligned along the fibers of the pectoralis major muscle and this gives an appearance like this ginkgo leaf sign okay it gives the appearance like a ginkgo leaf sign so please remember this ginkgo leaf sign this is basically present in the subcutaneous emphysema okay and this is basically present in which modality like in which modality do you see this ginkgo leaf sign so this is basically seen in the x-ray chest do you get this point so this is something which is present in the plain x-ray chest on the plain x-ray chest you get a subcutaneous emphysema which is a ginkgo leaf sign I hope you got this point. Everybody understood this? Yeah. Let's move on and let's talk about the next question. So there is a 52 year old man who basically falls from his bike. That is fine. He's found to have a pelvic fracture. On examination, he's found to have a perineal edema. That is also fine. And on the PR examination, you found that the prostate is not palpable. The patient is having the urge to pass the urine, but it is not able to void. What do you think is the diagnosis? So I'll just repeat it for you guys. What do you have? You have a person who has met with a road traffic accident and after the road traffic accident, the patient is not able to pass the urine. The patient is having the urge to pass the urine. Urge is present. Okay. Then you did a PR examination. 
on the PR examination you found that the prostate is not palpable so is the prostate palpable normally like in the normal individual if you go ahead and you perform a PR examination do you, can you palpate the prostate the answer is yes you can palpate a prostate but in this particular patient you are not able to palpate the prostate so what I'm trying to ask you what is the diagnosis is it an anti urethral injury post urethral injury bladder rupture or a uh, yeah or a bladder rupture so first of all what you need to understand is that why do you get an urge to pass the urine why do you get up and you go to the bathroom and you pass your urine because your bladder basically swells up okay your bladder is swelling up and because of like it fills up it kind of distends and because of this it sends signal to your brain and your brain instructs you to go and void do you get this point so this is something which is happening now if at all there is a rent in the bladder due to some reason there is a rent in the bladder so will the bladder ever get distended the answer is no and that is why you do not have urge to pass the urine in the bladder rupture not possible not happening okay not happening what about the urethral injury guys so anterior and posterior now the answer to this particular question is a posterior urethral injury why so let us kind of draw this what do you have you have the bladder you have the urethra that is a prostatic urethra you have the membranous urethra then you have a bulbar urethra and then you have a penile urethra this is what you have now here just around the membranous urethra what do you have you have a urogenital diaphragm okay and here what do you have you have a prostate gland like this over here you have a prostate gland like this over here so just understand one thing if at all if at all there is an injury and there is a disruption between this okay so if at all this kind of prostate or membranous junction is disrupted what is going to happen there are attachments in the pelvis which are attaching to this prostate and everything so they will basically pull the prostate up they are going to pull the prostate up and that is why earlier because your prostatic membranous junction was intact that is why the prostate was lying down there but now what is going to happen the prostate is going to be pulled up and this is what is called as a Wormutin sign this is what is basically present in the posterior urethral injury guys okay so all the scenario that a patient coming to with a road traffic accident not able to pass the urine okay not able to pass the urine and urge is basically present on the PR examination the prostate is not palpable the diagnosis is it is a posterior urethral injury do you get this point guys so this is a posterior urethral injury now let us talk about the next question which of the following forms of a medial wall of the femoral canal so what forms the medial wall of the femoral canal is it a pectineal ligament adductor longus sartorius or the lacunar ligament answer to this particular question is a lacunar ligament so what do we have guys we have a lacunar ligament like this and then you have a femoral sheath which is like this okay so in the femoral sheath the medial most compartment this is what is a femoral canal okay and then you have a femoral vein and the femoral artery okay so i hope you get this the medial part this is basically formed by the lacunar ligament answer to this particular question is a lacunar ligament i hope you got this medial wall of the femoral canal that is formed by the lacunar ligament you need to remember this okay i hope you get this point next question which i have for you guys is that uh, a 67 year old man is undergoing a transurethral resection of the bladder tumor using a diathermy suddenly during the procedure the patient's leg begins to twitch okay stimulation of which of the following nerves is most likely to cause it so during the turbt so for the bladder tumor if at all let's say there is a person who is having a bladder tumor so patient is having a bladder tumor you planned a turbt for this okay you planned a turbt for this and during a turbt what did you find that the leg started twitching or maybe there was the leg started like when you applied a cautery when you applied a cautery the leg basically twitched so what nerve is getting stimulated over here so please understand it is because of a obturator so what do you call it that it call it as an obturator jerk okay what do you call this particular phenomenon as you call it as an obturator jerk now why is this important because because of this obturator jerk what can happen there is an increased risk 
of bladder rupture there is an increased risk of the bladder rupture which you obviously don't want right so how can you prevent the obturator jerk how can you prevent obturator jerk So you can prevent the obturator jerk by basically giving the particular patient a general anesthesia or you can basically give an obturator block. Obturator block. So if at all you give the obturator block, the obturator nerve will not get stimulated. If at all it doesn't get stimulated, you will not have the obturator jerk. Do you get this point guys? So this is how you can prevent an obturator jerk from happening. Then what do we have? What is the okay so there is let's say a, a 63 year old man who is who smokes heavily and presents with dyspepsia okay so there is a man who is basically smoking heavily and presenting to you with a dyspepsia now he's treated uh, and found to have a helicobacter pyrene infection one evening he basically develops hematemesis and collapses what is the most likely vessel responsible for this particular thing so here the diagnosis is, is a gastroduodenal artery guys okay so here you have a basically bleeding from the gastroduodenal artery so what is this particular scenario guys here there is a patient who is most probably having a peptic ulcer and because of the peptic ulcer what happens the patient's landed up into an upper gi bleeding why what was the reason for that the reason is because there is a uh, the source of the bleeding is a gastro duodenal artery so what do you have over here let's say this is your stomach okay so in the first part of the duodenum the artery basically which goes just behind this was the first part of duodenum this is a gastro duodenal artery now let's say if at all there is a duodenal ulcer it can basically perforate anteriorly or it can basically perforate posteriorly if at all it perforates posteriorly what happens the patients come to you with hematemesis and the vessel which is responsible for this is a gastroduodenal artery what is the reason for this because this gastroduodenal artery this is basically going just behind the first part of the duodenum do you get this point guys and if at all there is an anterior perforation the patients will come to you with like any other visceral perforation okay so patients will basically come to you with a visceral perforation okay so that's all guys uh, these were the mcqs which i had to discuss with you for today right we will continue in the next session but yeah these were the couple of mcqs which i just wanted to discuss with you guys so i hope it added some value to your life and yeah see you around in the next session okay happy studying guys so guys uh, right if you have any comments or something you can just leave it in the comment uh, like down in the comment box and yeah please give this particular video a thumbs up and please subscribe to our channel so that you do not miss any of the videos which we basically keep on uploading thank you so much guys have a nice day happy studying see you in the next section bye